Do you view Saudi oil as cleaner or easier to get so it's the lesser of two evils? Because uh, I can't understand any other reason why you, why you wouldn't want to, to try and do it domestically. How does that appease the president's base by going to a dictator that has all this other baggage? And try, if we're going to get, if we want more oil, and, and it's going to be something you have to concede we need near term, whether, you know, long term, whether it's something you want to do or not, why not do it domestically? Why, why uh, uh, cuddle up to a, a dictator in the Mideast? My point, quite simply, is it is faster to bring online than what we're talking about in the United States. And Vivek loves to do this every time we come on together and really confuse what is going to come on quickly and what takes time. Okay. And a lot of the drilling proposals he's discussing, we're talking about at least two, maybe four years to bring online. And it is just not true that the policies that we are discussing here and the decisions that the administration made earlier are impacting what we're talking about right now. The Biden administration, and this pains me, is permitting month over month more than the Trump administration. So we hear from the oil and gas industry that they are making decisions that are about making money. And that is what we're talking about right here. They make it clear that they are doing the best that they can to return to their stockholders. That's what their job is. But what we're talking about in terms of long-term versus where we need to be on the end of the decade for uh, climate change, these are two different things. And it is absolutely true that we have to do both. And the president has committed to looking at every single tool that he has to relieve the pressure that people are feeling at the pump. And that means he is going to be able and going to have to talk to really un, you know, unfavorable people. And I mean, I don't even know how to um, explain this better to Vivek, but he has committed that he is going to do everything he can and really make sure that he is doing what he can to relieve this pain at the pump. The Christy, let me be helpful here. Uh, I think you know as well as anyone that that oil from Venezuela is not going to come online for another two years despite easing sanctions just last month. Now, We're you're talking right, about Saudi Arabia taking, today. If I, may, if I may finish, Christy, but I let you have your chance. Let me, let me make, make a clear point. In Biden's favor, he is releasing oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserves. He has pointed that as a short-term measure. But actually, it was reported earlier this week that 5 million of those barrels are going to China and other countries. Ask yourself why. The answer is actually really clear. U.S. refinery capacity is at a maximum, over 94 percent refinery capacity at use in the United States. And ask yourself why that's the case. Biden, in May of this year, canceled one of the largest refinery expansions that could have relieved that pressure in the U.S. Virgin Islands in the name of stopping its pollutive impact, ignoring the fact that its owners had committed to spend $3 billion on cleaner approaches to producing gas. So at the end of the day, you have to acknowledge with open eyes and with honesty to the American people, this was the intentional policy consequence of a president who made a campaign pledge to say that I guarantee you we're going to end fossil fuels. Those are his words, not mine, not yours. Those are the words of the president of the United States. He is now delivering on that promise by begging everyone around the world, including the OPEC cartel, to, to drill more oil abroad even as they induce the ESG cartel and others here at home to cause U.S. producers to produce less oil. And I see it as an irony that you have a president now groveling in front of every other major nation begging them to produce oil when America could have been doing it right here at home just four years ago. In 2018, the U.S. was the largest oil producer in the world. And by the way, American ingenuity is what led the way to the shale oil revolution 15 years ago. To me, it's not just bad policy. It is an American travesty to now watch the American president, the leader of the free world, have to be the one begging everyone else except producers here in the United States to ultimately secure America's energy security and energy independence. And that is an action that deserves political accountability. And if this president isn't going to do it, I hope the next, the next one and other policymakers will step in that void. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.